Hi, this is David Brown from International Market Entry Strategies. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Martin Thor Borg from Denmark, a serial entrepreneur who's been living in the United States for a number of year now, years now. Martin, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Martin, could you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you're seeing coming out of Denmark and what your perspective is on Denmark entrepreneurialism versus the United States? Well, um Danish entrepreneurs uh, are, are are very um, they're heavy entrepreneurs. They are they, Denmark is a very safe country, and that sounds all good. But the problem if uh, the problem is that if you don't feel the heat, nothing really big gets out of it. So one of the big problems in Denmark is that being an entrepreneur in Denmark is is in in in, in my opinion a bit too easy. I mean, they, it, 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 if, if you fall through and you don't make it, there are big uh, government programs that will help you. You won't starve, you won't be standing on the freeway asking people for money like in the States. You have still free healthcare, you have free education for your kids. I mean, you get paid by the government for doing nothing. So, I mean, uh, I think not that many Danish entrepreneur really makes it great. I mean, usually we, we call it in Denmark, we have the BMW effect. When you can afford a BMW, you kind of settle down and, and, and make peace. And you, you, you start improving your handicap on the golf course. And, um, and so uh, it's, it's, it's not that, it, it's not a that ceiling. Million. You hit a ceiling and you're like, ah, yeah, yeah, I don't well, want to work that hard to go in. I mean, we don't have any natural disasters in Denmark. We don't have any earthquakes. We don't have wildfires. We don't have drive-by shootings. We don't have anything interesting going on at all. So when you, when you hit a certain level where you kind of can see that what you made is enough for you to not do anything for the rest of your life, uh, why would you work? I mean, it's mm. it's you're safe. I mean, your kids can go to college. That's for free. If you if you get sick, you can go to the hospital. That's for free, right? So I mean, and and, and no earthquake will take away your business. You won't get sued for a crazy amount of money. You can't do that in Denmark. Oh, really? So it's very different in the United States, where there's a cap. Oh yeah, I mean, it's it's it, if if in Denmark, if if you sue somebody for let's take that example, you have to justify what you lost. And it's not that easy. I mean, if how would you justify how much you lost? And you have to prove it, right? So if I do damage to you, you have. I mean, I have to. You have to prove what kind of damage I did to you. And I mean, it, that's 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 pretty hard. I mean, so it's it's kind of the opposite. And we just got uh, the the uh, group lawsuits uh, a couple of years ago. We never had them before, and they only used against super big corporations. So all in all in Denmark you are, are very safe from almost all kind of things and that sounds very nice, which it is for a lot of people, but it also kind of takes out the urge to do really big things, because why would you? I mean, when you... you well, if you're also getting, what is the tax rate in Denmark versus the United States? Today? Top tax rate here is in the 30s, and Denmark it's what 50, 60 percent. It's not that easy actually because it's 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 I think it's in the 50s, but then you have 25 percent VAT on top of that. Okay. I mean, gasoline is is twice as expensive than in America uh, because of, of tax. Mm -hmm. If you take if you buy a car, it's four times as expensive as in America. So wait a second. So if I buy a um, Toyota. Camry for thirty thousand dollars. It's going to cost me a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in Denmark. Yeah, at least yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something so your cost like of doing business and, and actually surviving and living in Denmark is going to be substantially different than any American entrepreneur is used to. Yeah, I mean it's 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 good and bad because uh, it, it 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 depends. I mean what you make and so I mean if you really make money, America is the place to be. Right. But being poor, you would rather be in Denmark. If you're low income. It, it Denmark is actually nice. No, you can't afford a car, but public transportation is is not that expensive and it's very widely distributed. So you can take a bus or a train. And uh, so I mean, it, Denmark is, is is a nice country, but the, the, it, seen from an entrepreneur point of view, it, it's very hard to really. I mean, it's 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 not it's it's hard to really do really well because of tax and all these things. And I told them, why would you? 
I mean, you get to a certain level where your your life is very safe, it's very pleasant. I mean, and, and you, it's very clean in Denmark. It's mm. beautiful. You you walk around and you have a nice life. But why would you really take it to the top? Well, you know that's kind of interesting because I, I you know is that a European socialistic perspective? Because in the United States there's like the greed is good, like the uh, the Wall Street movie where mm. you know the guy comes and he says, well, greed is good because it makes the companies go to that extra level, like you're saying. Yeah. But but what if I understand you correctly? What you're saying is there's a a Denmark entrepreneurial perspective that you, you don't really need that. You need to get to a certain level where my family and my my friends are at a certain point, and, and that's all I really need. So there's really no shooting for the multi-billion dollar whooper. That, that's Moodle actually very rare among young people. As so right now, I see a lot of what what, what I call. Um, um, I don't know how to say that in, in, in English, but it's it's entrepreneurs that want to be entrepreneurs because they work maybe eight months a year and then they take four months off, go to some beautiful island, the Caribbean or whatever, and they just relax and, and go scuba diving for four months and then they come back and run the business for eight months. It's kind of like uh, high society entrepreneurs, they don't make a lot of money, I mean, it, it, but they have a... a, a well, I mean, I'm very well, close to life. I mean, it's, it's very a, different than America. Yeah, I'm very different. I mean, and you, you, in Denmark, I mean, it's, it's usually, I mean, if you take a normal working day, I mean, they have between five and seven, seven weeks off. If you go on maternity leave, I mean, when my wife did, I mean, it, it'll be maybe a year, typically a year. And, so, and they would usually have another kid that's two years and, uh, and so on. So, I mean, Danes take a lot of uh, vacations and there's a lot of small holidays and it's 37 hours a week uh, that you work and the unions are super strong. I mean, mm. if you violate anything, they'll beat your ass. Which is uh, which is good for some, but uh, in in general, you can say that uh, it hurts Denmark. I mean, the, the problem is that uh, what we need in Denmark right now is entrepreneurs that actually really go abroad and 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 and, and export a lot of things and doing good, bringing capital home to Denmark. Mm. But that never really that doesn't really happen. Well, let me ask you a question then, because I know the U.S. and uh, Australia, which one of one of my main mm. clients, has a um, significant number of export-oriented programs, whereby the government actually assists these companies in trying to export their products and services internationally. Um, Denmark is a country of approximately five million. Yeah. Um, actually, w w what do they have a lot of that as well, or is it just again that entrepreneurial spirit is different in Denmark? Because obviously, you have come to the United States exporting your knowledge yeah, yeah. to America. What? Does the typical Denmark government initiative have something like that, or is that just? Yeah, not they have a lot. I mean, they, they really try to to do a lot of stuff, but the all in all, I don't think the government can do that much. I mean, it, it it's it's the, the the big problem is that it it's if it, it starts in the schools. I mean, the schools are. The, the, the teacher or, or yeah like, all, all, I mean all the oh, way yeah. from the first grade actually the, the problem is that um, quality of life is more enjoying yourself and being spiritual or I mean knowing art and, and, and all these different things and I mean just now I mean they're starting putting entrepreneurship into the schools and, 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 and putting a value to that mm. I mean they've done that for several years though but it's it, it's getting better and better but I mean 10 years ago I mean being entrepreneur in Denmark was the same as being oh you, you didn't qualify for school right <laughs> I mean that was really a bad thing a saying you were an entrepreneur then you you were a loser I mean really unless of course you made it big but I mean not that many does so it's 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 a very cultural phenomenon that that, that in Denmark it, it wasn't cool to be an entrepreneur that has that has changed a bit though it, it's getting it's getting better and better but I don't think that the government is 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 is, is actually qualified to really to to and to, choose to, and, and to yeah and and, and 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 really make things going I mean it's it's more a cultural thing that has to be changed that we have to the problem in Denmark if if you look at a typical Dane they look like a look at, at a guy in a nice car well, uh, in America, you would say, "Oh, this this guy has done well." I mean, wow, he's good. And in Denmark, right. you would say, "This guy cheated in tax." I mean, <laughs> he's probably a crook, right? And it's it's just like this negative thing. So people that have done well are annoying. They probably cheated. They're probably criminals. They probably did harm to other people. Well, that's kind of like uh, we talked about the Australian tall poppy syndrome, where if anybody gets above the rest of them, they want to chop them down to size, kind of deal. So it's like you want everybody to be this homogenous layer and not the, the super entrepreneur, the one that actually creates, builds and stuff. So there, I think there's a number of countries around the world where this is not um, 
an abnormal phenomenon. It probably happens throughout much of Europe, not just Denmark, right? Yeah, I would say I would say so. I mean, I don't think it's a typical Danish uh, thing. I mean, I've, I've seen it in a lot of European countries. So, I mean, my my perspective is actually we have uh, conquered ourselves into <laughs> the ashes. I mean, it's a. I think Europe, uh, that might sound a little arrogant, but I think uh, several European countries are a bit more advanced than the US in a lot of different ways. Mm. I mean, we kind of, we, the, the unions of everybody, I mean, has, 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 we are at the top of the Maslow's, uh, the, Maslow's the, 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 yeah, exactly, yep. sitting up there and who philosophing about this and that. But we forget the whole ground of where we're sitting. I mean, it's 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 like Danish people think they're entitled to be wealthy. I mean, it's 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 a feeling that we uh, in, in Africa they're poor. I mean, they have flies around their head and they're fat, not because they're hungry, not hungry, but because they're actually sick, right? Mm -hmm. But in Denmark, we're entitled to be entitled to have this wealth because we forgot about it. It's, it's 50 years or 60, 70 years bef before we were really into war. I mean, we're into war with America and all that in Afghanistan, whatever, but it's, that's here, right? But back, it, it's so many years since Denmark was really in trouble. So all the, all, everybody uh, uh, that is less than 50 years old, I mean, kind of don't remember anything. So they haven't been challenged in so long. As no, not at all. I mean, we've, we've just been living in a society that's gone better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. So people have stopped kind of thinking about why do we have this society? That's because our grand, uh, parents and grandparents actually mm -hmm. worked really hard and make a super nice society. But we forgot about that. We think we're entitled to, I mean, that's a Danish, really Danish feeling that we're just smarter than everybody else. We're small, yeah, but we're so super smart. We kind of outsmarted everybody. And, 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 and Danish people really, really think that, mm. which is so scary because, I mean, this the, the Chinese are coming, everybody is coming, and, 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 and nobody really understands that the only thing happening is like, when the Chinese kind of outbid us in something, then we just don't like them. They're assholes, right? <laughs> and then the typical thing is, yeah, we can do like them, but do we want to live like them? No, but it's it's not up to us like that. If we want to change that, it's not by pointing fingers of the Chinese. We have to be better. Mm -hmm. We have to be better educated. We have to work harder. We have to kind of understand that the wealth our parents and grandparents created didn't come out of nothing. It's not because we are more intelligent than the rest of the world. It's because they worked harder. I mean, I think the United States has, has had a three-year dose of that type of medicine where we've really had to, to reevaluate where we are, how we got here, and what we're going to do to go forward. So I, I think the United States has, has a similar um, mindset. Let me, let me ask you a question, though. Since as a serial entrepreneur coming from Denmark, with everything that you've actually just talked about, can you give us an idea of some of the things that you've actually seen going through the system that you just described and, and some of the challenges that you've seen and overcome as a serial entrepreneur? Just trying to give our audience an idea of some of the things that you have benefited from, from your knowledge and experience. In, in what perspective? Well, I mean, Spam Fighter is one of your companies yeah, uh, which has done fairly well, and you've got another companies that you've done fairly mm -hmm. well. So are there any things that you've experienced that, that you would say, you know what, now I understand if, if I had thought this or known this five years ago, I would have done this okay. differently. So, I kind of call it the lessons oh, learned sure, aspect sure. of an entrepreneur because there's no entrepreneur I've ever met that says I would do is everything exactly oh, the right. same, right? So if you had lessons learned looking back five, ten years, what would you do differently or what have you learned? One of the things I really, I really focus on is it's very important to kind of look at what, the, what you like to do. I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's I, I, I mean, I, I also, I mean, I, have, I also have an entrepreneur poll in Denmark called Amino, where, where I have uh, fifteen thousand entrepreneurs on a daily basis uh, debating about uh, how to export, import, and whatever. So I, I give a lot of lectures to entrepreneurs, and those who fail almost all of the times are the entrepreneurs that think about money first. I mean, that just doesn't work. I mean. And, and I did so when I was younger. And uh, is that is it a passion, or is that an idea, or is that product, place, market type perspective? I mean, what? Because there's about five different ways you could look at that. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. But what perspective is more important than the monetary perspective? Because at the end of the day, you got to sell something to keep the doors oh, yeah, open, right? But yeah, but it's just, uh, it's, just uh, it's, it's, it's just it's just looking at the, the right thing at the right time. Because I mean, if you just start thinking about how do I make money. Uh, it, it, 
I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, what you have to do is you have to look at yourself, your abilities. One of, one of my skills, what I usually say to entrepreneurs is, just imagine a day that was fantastic for you. I mean, a day where you just felt fine, you came home and you sort of said, this day was just magnificent. Right. Uh, and that, uh, that day typically gave you a lot of the things that you're, that you're good at. And that day might have been something like, well, I met a lot of people. Ah, oh, okay, you like to work with people. Okay, that's fine. And, and so on. I mean, try to, try to utilize, try to find out what exactly is it that you really like and what are you good at? Because those two things are typically aligned. Sure. I mean, what you were good at in school gave, gave you good grades and, and, and so on. So, uh, so, so that is the first thing. And from that on, try to keep your eyes open. Try to read a lot of magazines, newspapers, surf the internet, do whatever. And suddenly you find something where you said that should be improved. And if you can see that it's aligned, I mean, with what you like to do, what you're good at, something you can see that could be improved in society or whatever, and you can see that that is actually something I want to do. I mean, then you have a, I mean, maybe probably a pretty strong case. And right. so, uh, so of course you should look at where's the money, but that shouldn't come first. I saw this actually, which 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 has inspired me a lot. I don't remember exact, the exact data, but uh, I saw this survey out of uh, young people coming out of college. And it was like, uh, those who wanted to be entrepreneurs, 50% or so of those entrepreneurs wanted to do it because they wanted to cash in. I mean, they just wanted the money and that was the fo main focus. The other 50% wanted to pursue a dream and they had this passion, a dream or something like that. Change the world idea. Yeah, something like that. They had something they wanted to pursue. 10 years after they interviewed the same people to see how they do. And the interesting thing was the 50% that they went for the money, only 4% of those actually were rich. But almost 40% of those who pursued the dreams actually made money. And I mean, that, that, that comes that, back to the passion we talked about, that, right? Exactly. You, you I mean, have to the, really have something that you can. Yeah, I mean, you have because I mean, being, the long hours being the long an entrepreneur hours. is super hard work. Yeah, you have to is. you have to work a, a lot of hours. I mean, and and a lot of and a lot of the failures and that I, I, I think, think it's, it's also the adversity, right? Too. I think I think most people that haven't been an entrepreneur don't realize that the, the cash flow isn't like this, right? It's like. You it's, know, it's and, you, and you've got to be willing to suck it up yeah, when times are bad exactly. and, and believe that you have an idea that matters and have that conviction and passion to keep going when the rent's due, you don't have any food in the cupboard, yeah, you and you got to keep going. You have to be strong. So you, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think that, that, lays, that makes sense. The 40% are successful versus the 4%. It's easy to go to Wall Street and make money working for J.P. Morgan. But but having that dream and sticking to it, that takes some real gumption. Yeah, but the, and the same, I mean, the, the other mistake I also did back then, I mean, and a lot of entrepreneurs does right now, is they make a business plan and think they're going to cash in in six months or a year or so. <laughs> and I mean, as I say, when you start a business, from that business you start it to it, 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 it gets anywhere, that three years. And usually it'll take you five years before you look at it and say, okay, I mean, if, if it happens, it's, it's doing pretty well. So the problem is a lot of entrepreneurs hit out for a 100 yard run yeah. and it's going to be a marathon and they don't realize that. And if you, if you think you're going to run 100 yards and it's a marathon, you're going to die. I mean, you, you're going to hit the wall after 500 yards, right? And that, that, that's not going to work for you. So the, the, it's very important that's to so know true. that this is a five, maybe seven years journey mm. where maybe the first year two or three you ain't gonna make any income and if, if, if you kind of know that in heart then you won't get that frustrated when things are not going your direction right. with, within two months or three months yeah. everything takes longer I mean more time than you expect and and you you have to prepare for that I mean on this I mean then you're going to give up after six months or a year I mean it's 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 just not that easy and it doesn't matter I mean I don't actually it's it's funny because there's a lot of people saying yeah uh, one of one of the guy I know made Skype for instance uh, Janus Fritz uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of people tell me oh man that's an overnight success Say so, no, what, 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 what the hell are you talking about? Really yeah, from the from years? the from the day <laughs> I heard the word Skype to was a success was a year. Say so, yeah, but what you don't realize is Janos was sitting in Lithuania with programmers for four years mm. 
programming this, and before that, he actually uh, made Kazar, which uh, was kind of the, yeah. some of the engine out of the sky. European, yeah. yeah, exactly. But he's Danish, actually. Okay. Uh, but uh, if, uh, he did it together. Did you interview with... him? Can we see him on some of your interviews? No, unfortunately, he's very private. We'll look forward to that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that, but he's very private. I mean, I've talked to him face to face several times, but he's very, very private. So, uh, but, but anyway.